morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Call, call the quarterly meeting to order. And I guess the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Everyone has had the agenda emailed them. Email to them. Is there any additions? If not, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Motion to adopt. There's a motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And we close the last time here and then the agenda has been adopted. Your meetings from April 13th is in your folders, and I think you also may have gotten those emailed to you. Are there any additions or corrections to the, the minutes from April 13th of 22? If not, is there a motion to adopt? Move to adopt. There's a motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like sign. Hearing none. Um, there is no old business, but I guess uh, I guess I should say welcome. <laughs> Tina, <laughs> nice to see you around. Uh, we've we've been missing you the last few times. It's nice to you join us today. It's so each year we we by law do elect our officers, and this year is the same. And so the floor is open for nomination for chairman of the board for the upcoming year. Is our is our nomination? Mr. Chairman, I do have a nomination. Mr. Edwards. I would nominate you, Terry Barnard, to serve another term as our chairman. You've done an exceptional job representing us, both internally and externally. Uh, you have a great relationship with the General Assembly, the Governor's Office. Uh, I believe you've done a fine job, and it's my honor to nominate you for another term as chairman. Nominations for Terry Barnard for chairman is our second. Second. There is a second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor of the nomination say aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign? Nomination appears. Thank you. I appreciate that, Brian and members. I, I, uh, I'm deeply honored. This has been a, an interesting opportunity. I remember the first time getting that nomination, actually the very first chairman when we were going virtual. And there were some concerns as to whether it could be done from near Savannah. But you can just about do anything from Savannah can't come in. Yes, you can. <laughs> Very good. I, I'm so, I, I'm deeply humbled and honored to continue to lead you guys this, this year. Our second order of business is the nomination for vice chair. The floor is open for nominations for vice chair. Is there a nomination? Mr. Chairman, I do have a nomination. Mr. Elwes. It is my honor to nominate Ms. Jacqueline Bunn Esquire to serve another term as our vice chair. She's done an admirable job. She's a key member of this board, particularly with her, uh, her professional background and her legal training. So it's my honor to nominate Ms. Jacqueline Bunn to serve another term as her vice chair. Ms. Bunn's been nominated to serve an additional term as vice chair. Is there a second to the nomination? I'll second. There is a second. Any other nominations? Hearing none. All in favor of Ms. Jacqueline Bunn serving for the upcoming year as vice chair, say aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign? Hearing none. Motion carries. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I uh, look forward to working with all of you for another year, and I'm very honored that you have selected me for this position. So our first uh, policy amendment is 1.105 um, firearms. Those policies are in your folders and also, I believe, have been emailed out to you. We will give, we'll, we'll take them all and then at the, at the conclusion, if any member wishes to uh, uh, pull one out of the back, then we'll vote on it separately. Otherwise, we'll vote on it collectively. First policy. Yes, sir. Board policy 1.105 firearms in the header section under reference slash source materials. A paragraph from Georgia Code is updated from paragraph 6 to now read paragraph 7. Uh, so to address the same authority that's referenced in section 1.01 of the same policy. Any questions? Hearing none, our next policy is board policy 1.130 of vehicle safety standards. And board policy 1.130 of vehicle safety standards and the header and reference slash of materials reference the DOAS RMS Motor Vehicle Use Program has been removed and is no longer known as such. A link to the DOAS fleet management manual has been added as well as links to the vehicle operation law to the knowledge and performance of our safety tips. Section 1.102, minor wording was added. For the context purposes, the minor program error was corrected. 
term motor vehicle safety standards policy was removed or replaced with simply policy. In section 1.103, referencing the agency name was shortened simply to board. In section 1.104, the definition for at fault has been added. In section 1.105, a sentence was added to describe DOAS role in fleet management. And again, the agency name was shortened to board. Sections 1.106.1 and 1.106.2 were combined under a new section title, uh, Employee Driver Qualifications. As a result of the combined section, all subsequent sections and subsections were renumbered. In the now updated section 1.106.1, sentence referencing hyperlink documents were removed, as this has already been rec uh, recommended to be added into the header of this policy. Minor grammatical changes were made for clarification purposes, and the word January was removed when referencing a time frame, as this was not necessary since calendar years already makes this clear. List of driver qualifications were added in the same section. Uh, as a result of the list, the sentence was removed referencing the driver requirement that has already been enumerated in the new qualification list. In updated section 1.106.2, the term employee was added to the section title. In updated section 1.106.2.1, terminology was added to address the length of time an employee would be disqualified from driving a state vehicle. Minor formatting changes were made to list disqualification for consistency purposes. In the updated section 1.106.2.2, minor word changes were made for clarification purposes. In updated section 1.106.2.3, the formatting of the offenses were made for consistency purposes. In updated section 1.106.2.6, Minor grammatical changes were made for clarification purposes. A new section, which is section 1.106.3, hands-free driving, and its subsections were added to address the current hands-free driving law The last two sections of this policy were addressed motor vehicle accidents, were removed because they had been added to a new motor vehicle accident reporting policy that is to be introduced later. Any questions? And then we will move to the next item, which is for policy 1.131, use and assignment of motor vehicles. For policy 1.131, use and assignment of motor vehicles, the title of this policy will be updated to management, use, and assignment of motor vehicles. Uh, this will be updated in all applicable portions of this policy. In the header under reference slash source materials, the Office of Planning and Budget was removed and DOAS Risk Management Services was added along with a hyperlink to the DOAS Fleet Management Manual. In section 1.102, context was added to address the DOAS as role in fleet management and the board as an agency fleet coordinator to handle agency fleet matters and act as point of contact between the board and DOAS. Several underlines in the margins of this policy were removed as this was an error. Definition section 1.104.4, 4, Capitol Hill, was removed because reference to this has been removed from policy. In section 1.105, a paragraph was added to address the deal that DOAS establishes the authority of the agency fleet coordinator. A sentence and hyperlink was removed that addressed fleet, uh, excuse me, vehicle management has been moved to a new section of this policy, 1.10, motor vehicle management. In section 1.105, a list of required items for each state vehicle is added. Under the new section 1.106.1, uh, a list of management duties was added to address the maintenance and repair needs of state vehicles. As a result of the new section, all subsequent sections and subsections were renumbered. In the updated uh, section 1.106.2, a title, Authorized Use of State Vehicles, was added. In paragraph E of this section, there was minor rewording for clarification purposes. In paragraph I, the term uh, the drivers was added and minor grammatical correction was made for clarification purposes. In updated section 1.106.3, a title, unauthorized use of state vehicles was added. In the same section, the term operators was removed and a sentence addressing potential disciplinary actions was added. Minor word removal and additions were made also for clarification purposes. Two sentences were added regarding insurance coverage when engaged in unauthorized use. And the last sentence refer referencing a list of prohibited use activities was removed, as this list will now be listed under a new section. A new subsection, 1.106.3.1, prohibited use of state vehicles, was added, which now lists uh, these prohibited uses. The transport of hitchhikers was removed and consolidated with the next, uh, me, with the next prohibited use. As a result, all listed prohibited uses were renumbered. In the updated paragraph B, uh, hitchhiker, re hitchhiker reference was added and some rewording was done for clarification purposes. 
In updated paragraph D, a word is added, and some rewording is done for clarification. In updated paragraph F, specific prohibited events was removed uh, because the existing wording was enough. In updated paragraph G, rewording was done for clarification. In the new subsection, 1.106.3.2, prohibited activities while on a state vehicle, in all old paragraphs, uh, I through N will be left. Updated paragraphs A and B had some unnecessary uh, wording removed as a result of the newly named subsection, 1.106.3.2. In updated paragraph E, a word was made plural and a new letter G was added to cover a new prohibited activity, operating a computer device while driving. A new subsection was added, 1.106.4, overnight use of the state vehicle, and a new subsection was created, under which, uh, which is to be numbered as 1.106.4.1, which will address the authorization of vehicles and reference uh, section 4.5 of the DOAS fleet manual. As a result of fleet manual reference, Paris A through C are removed, and subsection HC pool vehicle assignments was placed as section 1.106.4.2, and all of paragraph A was placed under this new subsection. And finally, summary wording was done to this new, uh, new section for clarification purposes, and paragraph B was removed. Any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to Board Policy 3.201. In Board Policy 3.201, international, internal excuse me, financial controls. In section 1.106.1, minor rewording was done for clarification purposes. In section 1.106.2, minor rewording and removal of the term ledger sheets was, uh, was done, as this is an outdated term. In section 1.106.5, the word or was replaced with and, and when detailing who will approve requests for expenditure of funds. Any questions? Hearing none. Our next board policy is 3.202, Signature Controls and Checks. Board policy 3.202, Signature Control and Checks, in section 1.105, Policy. The section was reworded to include electronic signature and added reference to compliance with state accounting policies. And in section 1.106.1, minor grammatical change was made for clarification purposes. Any questions from members? Here, here we go. Our next item will be Board Policy 3.203 Audits. Board Policy 3.203 Audits, Section 1.102 Purpose. Re a rewording was done in order to clarify and further detail the requirements of the Board to conduct internal financial and property audits. Section 1.104 Definitions. A new definition was added as 1.104.2 uh, to define fiscal year. In Section 1.105, minor rewording was done for clarification purposes. In section 1.106.1, reference to the last day of the fiscal year, June 30, was removed as this is now addressed in the definitions above, and parole board has now been shortened to simply board. In subsections 1.103.1, 1.106.3.1.2, .1 and 1.106.3.2, minor, minor wording was done for clarification purposes. Subsection 1.106.3.1.1 and 1.106.3.3.2 Rewording was done referencing internal inventory systems for tracking fires and computers. In subsection 1.106.3.3, which addresses interagency transfer equipment, was removed as this is no longer utilized. As a result of this subsection removal and subsequent uh, subsections were renumbered. In section 1.106.4, rewording was done for clarification purposes. And in section 1.106, minor grammatical changes were made and the word was added when referencing the fiscal year. We found a reference, reference to audits done by the DOAA was removed as this is not necessary. Any questions from the members? Hearing none, we'll move to the next policy, which is Board Policy 3.207, Motor Vehicle Accident Report. Uh, board Policy 3.207, Motor Vehicle Accident Reporting. This is a new policy being proposed to be added to the manual. This is a new policy addressing the responsibilities of board employees and supervisors when a vehicle accident occurs and provides guidelines when responding to an employee-involved accident. Any questions from members? Hearing then, we'll move to the next board policy, 3.310, body armor. 
More policy 3.310 body armor is also a new policy which addresses the wear of body armor when performing agency related business. Any questions from the members? There are none. Our last policy revision would be board policy 3.311 polygraph examiners. Board policy 3.311 polygraph examiners is also a new policy and this establishes a standard for board poly polygraph examiners, the instrumentation used, and the applicability of polygraph examinations. Any members? Any questions from the members? <coughs> there are none. So all of the policies are before the board point, it looks like you've been really busy since all I think the meeting. Is there any member wishing to uh, withdraw one of the, of, the, of the amendments and vote on them separately? Otherwise, if not, is there a motion to adopt as a batch? So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed like sign? Hearing none, all board policy amendments have been adopted. Thanks, Thanks, Chair. So, uh, I think we have an abbreviated director's report, Chris. And if you would come and explain to us what abbreviated means. <laughs> I think the proper terminology is very abbreviated. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to say congratulations to Chairman Barnard and Vice Chair Bunn. Uh, thank you for your willingness to continue to serve in these leadership roles with the board. And for the entire board, thank you for your leadership, guidance, and support of your operational team. Your operational team remains strong, uh, active, and engaging of the stakeholders, staying true to those operational priorities that we have, the four E's of engaging, educating, encouraging active participation, and enhancing public safety for all Georgians. I would like to deviate just for a second and recognize Chris Kim, our director of, of uh, IA and training. Uh, we spent just the last few minutes going over many policy changes. It's Chris's responsibility to ensure each and every policy and procedure that we have in the, in the agency is reviewed and edited every year. So the work that we went over just in a few minutes took all of leadership and management across the agency and the coordination of Chris and our legal services director, Laquandra Smith, to make that happen. And although it's, it goes by very quickly, it represents months of work. And so I just want to say thank you, Director Kim. Uh, we are going to have an abbreviated uh, director's report, our, our last uh, director's report in Statesboro. We, I think we went through every unit and division and had a, a significant report out. So we're going to forego that today and highlight the Georgia Office of Victim Services and some of their recent uh, uh, engagements of community stakeholders and internal processes. So really, I'm here to introduce the, uh, the lady and man of the hour, uh, our Deputy Executive Director and Director of uh, Georgia Office of Victim Services, Ms. Rita Rocker and Deputy Director Keir uh, Chapman. Thank you, Chris. Um, again, congratulations, Mr. Chairman and Madam Vice Chair. I'm glad to, to be working with you and the entire board for another year. All right, we'll get on with the Georgia Office of Victim Services. Um, so as you're all aware, we had our first Georgia Office of Victim Services conference at Lake Lanier and Lake Lodge, uh, May 25th through the 27th. I can't believe I forgot those dates already. Um, so we just want to give you a very brief presentation about um, how the conference went. I know some of you were there, and we appreciate your attendance, but um, for those of you who had to leave earlier could not be there, you'll just get to see a little bit of a glimpse of what went on. So I'd like to introduce Deputy Director Kira Chapel. Good morning, board. Good morning, board. And uh, again, thank you for this opportunity to uh, present to you to talk about the, the amazing things going on at the Georgia Office of Victim Services. Um, we recently had our first GOVS conference for, um, for district attorneys and their victim advocates at the Lake Lanier um, Legacy Lodges. And we'd like to first thank you all and our executive director, um, Barnett, for giving us the vision and, and trusting us to, to make this conference a reality. We also want to thank um, what has to be the, the hardest working group of public service in Georgia, the staff at the Georgia Office of Victim Services, who ultimately um, put in the work and to pull this thing off. 
Um, the conference was a true example of the four E's um, and, and engaging all stakeholders, educating um, stakeholders on the process, like that, Chris, um, encouraging active participation, and enhancing the parole process. Um, nearly 100 stakeholders attended the conference, including a district attorney, their assistant, or a victim advocate from almost all the judicial services in Georgia. The, the presentation included a, a welcome by First Lady Kemp um, and dignitaries from the agencies we represent, um, including George Department of Corrections, DCS, the Prosecuting Attorney Councils, and CJCC. We also had two survivor testimonies. Um, the G GBI Director Reynolds updated us about the state's efforts to address human trafficking. We had a dynamic collaboration, um, collaborative presentation between um, clemency, field operations, and victim services um, regarding parole 101. Um, we had a really unique training on the clemency options in Georgia by Director Smith. Um, and the GOVs actually presented two presentations on one communications and restitution. And we ended the conference with an update from the statewide victim services providers and advocates. So it truly was a great conference and an awesome opportunity to finally meet in person some of the great people we work with on a daily basis and assist the, um, who help us to assist the victims in Georgia. And, and what I have left for you now is just a couple of um, evaluations. We did some evaluations after each presentation so we can get an idea of what people thought about them and, and make sure we were doing the right thing. As you see, we, we ranked them from one to five, and, and for the most part, we had a 4.9, so pretty much five almost all the presentations. Some of the things that people were seeing regarding the parole 101 was that it was a great presentation, um, that it was fantastic and kept everyone engaged, and I learned many new things, and of course, great explanations. Um, on the, oh, an amazing job, learned a lot to take back to my team. On the, you do the crime, you do the, you do the, you do the, you do the crime, you do the time, right, by Director Smith. Of course, again, uh, average around 4.9, so everyone loves the presentation. You know, one of the things they were saying there was that it was very informative. You know, I, I didn't know Director Smith had that in her, but she did an outstanding <laughs> job of presenting uh, why we do what we do. You know, on one -on communication, again, uh, an average of 4.9, and some of the, the comments were a great presentation, very informative. Um, content was super useful and easy to follow, and the training gave us tools that we can use to help our victims. And then um, on our, our, our last presentation that our office put on was Show Me the Money, which was a, which was a presentation on restitution. Um, some of the comments were awesome presentation. Again, it was a, a pretty much average of 4.9 on all the presentations, and it was great information. And so you all may be aware that we uh, presented a, a video that we worked with the communications department. It was really a vision, again, by um, Director Barnell. He said he really wanted us to start telling our story at Victim Services. So we teamed up with the communications director and presented a video, which I'm about to show you now if you haven't seen it already. But it's now also up on the website, I believe. So this comes to the opportunity where we'll take public comment. Uh, the board will not receive comments or questions, and will not and will not receive obviously questions or on that on offenders or comments on particular offenders. But if you do have questions or comments you want to make about particular offenders, we have a call line. The call line number is 404-656-4661.